In this video, we're going to calculate the price of a bond. The price is often not the amount that is printed on the bond. A bond is a contract to borrow money. The borrower is called the issuer of the bond and the lender is called the creditor or the banker or the investor. This bond pays interest of 8% Semi-annual interest means it pays interest every six months, so this bond would pay 4% interest every six months. The term is five years, so that means every six months for five years, uh, an interest payment of $4,000 would be made. At the end of five years, the face amount is paid back, the $100,000. But that doesn't mean that uh, the amount borrowed was $100,000. That just means that after five years, $100,000 will be paid back. Even though this bond will pay back $100,000 at the end of five years, that's not the amount of money that a buyer will necessarily pay or lend to uh, buy this bond. Let's consider a few things. Number one, the price of the bond changes whenever the market interest rate changes. Uh, number two, the market interest rate changes and as buyers and sellers enter or exit the market. Uh, it might be helpful to think of the bond market as an auction. If the auction is crowded, the, the people at the auction are going to bid up the price and they would pay more than the face amount uh, in a crowded auction. But if there's not very many people in attendance at the auction, not very many people interested in buying the bond at, in, at any given moment or day, then the bidding, of course, will not be as aggressive and the price that someone might pay to get this bond it might be less than the face uh, if they pay more than face, they pay a premium price. And if they pay less than face, they pay a discounted price. Well, the price that they actually pay is the result of a formula that I'm going to show you on the next slide. The price of the bond is the present value of the two things you get when you buy the bond. When you buy this bond, you're, you're going to get 100000 in five years. And you're also going to get 4000 every six months. However, these amounts are in the future. You're going to buy this bond and pay cash today to receive cash back in the future. And the time value of money says that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. So we have to consider the time value of money and find the present value of these two benefits to figure out how much we're willing to pay today. Okay, here's a completed example of the formula. We have to assume uh, a market interest rate that is most likely different than the contract rate printed in the bond. It, the market rate changes continuously, like the, like the temperature outside changes continuously. Uh, so the market rate in this case is higher than 8%. Uh, let's look at this calculation now. The the face amount of the bond is something we'll get back in the future. So we have to discount that to the present. That future number of 100,000 is only worth 61,400 today. Now let's look at that bond annuity. That bond annuity is going to be received every six months for five years. That's 10 payments or $40,000. The, the sum of those interest payments will be 40000 but we will receive them in the future. The present value of that annuity is only 30888 So the present value of the two things we're buying, the face amount and the interest payments, in this case is 92288 This bond sells for a discounted price. After all, who would want to buy a bond that pays 8% when the market says the appropriate rate in that moment is more, 10%. You should be getting 10% in this moment, the market thinks, 
and here's somebody selling something that is not very attractive. So in order for this bond to be sold, it has to sell for a discounted price. To find the factors in these tables, we need to determine which row and which column to look at. And um, so assuming interest, of, market interest of 10%, we will go to column 10% divided by two or 5%. Why did I divide by two? Because this bond is paying interest two times per year. If this bond was paying annual interest one time per year, we would have used column 10%. But since this, this bond is paying twice a year, we're gonna take 10% divided by two and we will use column 5%. And uh, the row is the number of payments. Uh, we have a five-year term times two payments per year, that equals 10 total payments. So row 10.